All right, let's do this. It's going to be, uh, well, potentially really, really, really buggy. And we're just waiting for one more player to get underway. And that, that should be it, really. That's uh, actually one of the uh, QA guys. And my God, there's a lot of people subscribing right now. Be sure to go and uh, follow the channel. You can just follow the, hit the follow button on the actual Twitch uh, channel at the bottom. In the meantime, as well, we're doing this charity th uh, thing together with Able Gamers that you uh, could go uh, check out. They are basically making sure that uh, people or these gamers that are no longer able to do the things that they want to do in the in the world of video games and helping them adapt to better same time. So if you scroll down on the Twitch page, there's a big button there with a um, with a van on it. So just click that and I will take it to a potential donation page where you can uh, go and uh, help those guys out because they're doing a great job and we here at Paradox can only applaud such efforts. In the meantime though, all 500 of you are on standby and who are who do we actually have in the game? We've got so many players and we're underway and this is where we pray it doesn't crash. Adapting history. Uh, connecting. Uh, connected. Uh, looking for host. Connecting. Connected. All players here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. We're in. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So currently the game is paused. So let's get this party on the way. First of all. It's very important that we uh, have full disclosure on this one. This is very, very, very much in beta slash alpha right now. This right now is Crusader Kings 2, specifically the new expansion for Crusader Kings 2 called, well, Charlemagne that we have running. The new start date on the 1st of January, 7, uh, 769 in the 8th century AD as Char Charlemagne, uh, Carloman and Charlemagne, or Carlemagne as some people would like to call him, have their two kingdoms within Europe and of course Middle and West Francia are of course here and in all honesty this could be a very very interesting game from our perspective because what we do here is we throw 35 of our developers as well as various people from in-house including our CEO into this game and see where they end up in a sort of uh, to test out all the new features in the game of course we have a QA department that tests these these features pretty much 24 7 however when it comes to these large-scale engagements and when people interact with each other in a beta environment it really allows for very interesting things to happen and for instance we already got a few exploits out of the way specifically even before we started this game for instance there were some issues with uh, people trying to join certain factions they should not have been able to which were immediately nerfed into the ground. Now, right now our players are setting up, and it's very important to note that, uh, once again, this game right now is potentially very unstable. We cannot give you any guarantees that this stream will last longer than 30 minutes. Could be the full two hours, could be just 30 minutes, depending on what, what will happen. I'm quickly going to go here towards my uh, my communication. There we go. So, uh, you know, the QA department does not work 24-7. It's just a hyperbole. But uh, right now we're uh, paused and we're trying to get underway. And as you can see, we have a new spectate mode. Now, the new spectate mode here for uh, Crusader Kings 2 was pretty much created after we messed around with a spectate mode in European Renaissance 4. Basically, what happened with it is, is basically in EU4, the spectate mode was effectively god mode as in a sort of judeo-christian god where he doesn't really do all that much from any point of view now of course that is a very loaded thing to say we're on our way and uh, basically it had no impact on anything whatsoever however with crusader kings 2 specifically with spectate mode 2.0 as some of it call it in-house we can actually fire events at people that are currently playing. Now, this causes all sorts of shenanigans from a Greek god perspective, where we can pretty much say, hey, this character over here, yeah, let's uh, let's fire an event uh, at him. For instance, uh, let's give him the Marco Polo event. So that's something that is uh, very, very interesting indeed. Let's go over towards our players, though, as uh, we actually have 34 players in this game right now. Okay, it's it's doing just fine. So I right now can see pretty much everybody in the world and what they're all doing. Now, I quickly I'm going to need to go through. For instance, Groogie over here, who is up here. There he is. 
we see now pretty much Grugi and what he is doing in the world as well as all of his uh, stuff. And he has a successor nomination uh, on the go. On the go, he's got elective Gavelkint, which is pretty pretty standard. He's got minimal tribal organization, which are all new features in Charlemagne. But he is starting off as one of the Slavic pagans in the northern of Europe. Now that he's part of the uh, Ilmenians. Now his goal for this game, at least according to him, he wants to migrate down to Zoon, specifically down here into the middle of Afghanistan, because he wants to turn into the Zoonist that he's always dreamt of being. And uh, in all honesty, I wonder if he's going to be able to do that in general. Now he starts off here in Novgorod. He will already have one of his holy sites available, which is uh, pretty much one of the... Yeah, it's, it's pretty useful for him because he can, you know, reform the Slavic religion fairly easily if he wants to. Now, as you can see here, I'm quickly going to click this away. As you can see here, uh, if we look over towards his uh, domain uh, area, as you can see, he's got a domain size of 4 out of 8. Now, we've changed the domain stuff around a little bit if we go towards the law screen. Um, if you look at the tribal organization. As you can see, oh, this is completely still in beta, as you can see. Oh, God. Oh, he is at war. So he's uh, gone to war. A million conquest of Ingria. Okay, that is over here. He should be able to levy more than enough troops. Yeah, he's got 1,475 troops. He's got 81 gold. 81 gold should have no problem whatsoever taking him down. And Ingria is pretty much done for. I'm actually really curious here about his du jour. Uh, that is not what I was looking for. There we go. So, Tribe of Ilmians, yeah, that's that one. And this is his du jour, yeah, there we go. So, basically, what he wants to do is... Hold on, can he do anything with this? Tribe of Ingrians, yes, du jour, there we go. So, he can become the High Chiefdom of Estonia, or potentially even the Kingdom of Finland. But is that really that useful for him? We shall see. Well, it doesn't look like there is no uh, kingdom actually set up here at the moment. So let's take a look here at this ducal area. Oh. Come on. Click it away. Yeah, whatever. Troublesome peasants. So um, basically what's going on here, all of our players have started off in a duchy. And some of these duchies are pretty much close to each other. For instance, the letter Z over here. Wow. He's already... Damn. He's got... He's got himself quite a lot of stuff already. How, did, how the hell did he manage to do that? So, uh, the, he's in the Duke of Alemannia. That's very curious. Duke of Alemannia. He's already got 48 holdings. That's uh, Turingia, by the way. I think. No, Alemannia, yeah. So, he's already got 48 holdings. That is huge. That is one of the biggest holdings probably in the game right now. Because look at this. There's a huge swath of territory he's already got under his control. Now if we look, for instance, at Fred over here, uh, over at uh, Budumia, he, for instance, only has 12 holdings. So basically what we did for the game is we pretty much had a big dice roll with a pre-selected set of duchies, and pretty much anybody could grab any of them. Now we got the melee designer for the game over here as well, but as you can see, the letter Z is a huge amount of territory already. That is massive. That's going to be incredibly diff difficult to deal with. Anyway, Middle and West Francia, yeah, they'll most likely go towards war. If you quickly pop over towards Carl uh, of West Francia, yeah, as you can see here, he's got a couple of dangerous factions on his way. Elective secession for uh, West Francia, what they want. That's going to be problematic. Let's go and take a look at his relationship. As there is his rival, King Carloman of Middle Francia, his brother, and they're already at war. Uh, West Francia claim on Middle Francia, yeah, so they actually want the whole kingdom. That is very early. That is exceptionally early for this war to begin. Damn. Hmm. That is uh, pretty crazy. But yeah, this uh, this ducal title, this ducal title here of uh, Alemannia and Schwaben, that is a huge, huge, huge swath of land. Let's take a look here at his heir, your son, heir to the Duchy of Alemannia. De Jure is just tiny normally. What did he do to get all this extra territory? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Duke, heir, seems to be just fine. It's pretty crazy, though. Yeah, that's that's pretty insane. For those who are wondering, yes, I, I will have to juggle about 15,000 characters on the map. Well, actually, you know, 
32 in this particular case, but uh, it's going to be pretty difficult to keep track of. So at the moment, we're pretty much going to focus on Europe for the main for the main part. Uh, the spectate mode is not entirely done just yet, and uh, that is uh, going to cause some problems. I'm going to check here something.